Okay, so in this problem, we're told a 265 kilogram load is lifted 23 meters vertically with an acceleration of A equals 0 0.150 G by a single cable. Determine A, the tension in the cable, B, the net work done on the load, C, the work done by the cable on the load, D, the work done by gravity on the load, and E, the final speed of the load, assuming it started from rest. So first, let's kind of understand what we go, uh, have going on here. Basically, uh, we have this load, which is basically a box, and we know it's 265 kg, and it's going to be lifted 23 meters with an acceleration of uh, this right here. And we're going to be calculating a bunch of things, uh, so let's just uh, go ahead and get started. So let's start with A. So for A, what they're asking us to find is the tension in the cable. So we know it's going to have some tension T like this, and what we're going to want to do is go ahead and solve for it. So we know that uh, we have T going upwards, and we want to draw the free body diagram in order to solve for T. So we have to label all the other forces acting on it. So there's only one other force, which is the force due to gravity, which is equal to mg. That's what the force due to gravity is equal to. And so these are going to be the two forces acting on it. So the way we're going to solve for T is by summing the forces along this direction. So the way you do that is you say the sum of the forces, and I'm going to call this the Y just because we're working on a straight line like this. So basically the Y axis, and we know F equals MA. So the sum of the forces have to equal mass times uh, acceleration. So mass times acceleration equals, and then we just have to add up uh, the forces because that's what this is. So the forces we have are tension and uh, force due to gravity. When it goes upwards, we call it positive. When it's downwards, I like to uh, label it negative. So T would be positive, and then we would minus MG. So in order to solve for T, we know it's going to be equal to mass times acceleration of our object here, which is uh, this crate here. And uh, we would just add mg. So all we do is m, and then I'm going to factor out the m. So it's basically just the mass times the acceleration uh, plus gravity. So the mass, they tell us, is 265 kg. Uh, and then we have the acceleration, which is 0 0.150 times g. So I'm going to convert this into meters uh, per second squared. So g is just uh, 9.8 which is the acceleration due to gravity. It's a constant, so we just multiply 0 0.150 times it, which is 1.47. So you have 1.47 meters per second squared. So plugging this in for our acceleration of our object, I actually don't need to write the units, uh, and then plus uh, g, which, as I said before, was 9.8. So all you got to do is just multiply these out now. So 265 times 1.47 plus 9.8 and you're going to find that it equals 2986.55 so you can round this i'm going to move it over three so it's basically 2.9 times 10 to the three uh, we're dealing with tension which is a force so our things in newton so about 2900 or sorry, not 2.9 times 10 to the 3. It would be about 3,000. We can say 2.99 times 10 to the 3. So 2.99 times 10 to the 3 newtons. So about 2,990. Or you can just leave it in the exact value however you'd like. Uh, I'm just going to actually leave it like this for now. Just round out however you'd like. And let's go ahead and move on to uh, B. Okay, so now for B, what they're wanting us to find is the net work done on the load. So we know we're going to be solving for work here, and we're finding the net work done on the lo uh, load. So keep that in mind. So we're trying to find work. Uh, the formula for work is force times distance times the cosine of theta. So we need to know the net force acting on it, the distance it travels, and theta. And what theta is, it's the angle between the direction it travels and the force acting on it. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so the first thing we have to find is the net force acting on it. So uh the force or the net force we know f equals ma so the net force is equal to its mass times the net acceleration and so they tell us what the net acceleration is it's basically just the acceleration it moves at which is 0 0.150 g so uh the net force is uh mass times 1.50 uh g so that's the net force since this is what it's moving in there, we're trying to find the net work on the load. So we're using the net force, which is this right here. Uh, so writing this in, we have M 
times 0 0.150 g, uh, and then multiplying that by the distance. So we know it travels 23 meters in this case. So uh, d is going to be 23, and then multiply by the cosine of theta. So as I said before, theta is the angle between uh, the force being applied in the direction it travels. So uh, let's look at it right here. We know the force being applied is upwards, and it's pulling it upwards. So the force is going upwards, and the direction it travels is also upwards. So since they're both going upwards, they're basically right on top of each other. And if they're directly on top of each other like this, the angle between them is zero because it, it's not like this, right? There would be an angle, but if they're right on top, there's no angle between them. Therefore, it's zero. And what that means is uh, theta would be zero, cosine of zero is just one. So really, it just cancels out and you just have uh, one. So really, it's just going to be equal to the mass, which is 265 kilograms times uh, 0 0.150 g, which we found right here is uh, 1.47. So just writing in that value and multiplying that by 23. So plugging this in, 265 times 1.47 times 23. And you will get... 8959.65. Let me rewrite this a little bit. Uh, 0.65. And so we measure work in joules. So the net work done, you can write W net is going to be equal to this value right here. Uh, you can round it if you like, but I will leave it like this. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, C. So. Let's go ahead and do C now. Okay, so now what we're going to be finding is uh, the work done by the cable on the load. So basically the cable we know is applying a force or the tension has a force of a tension equal to some value. And so when we solve for the work, instead of using uh, the net force like we did last time, since we're dealing with the cable, we want to use the tension. So we need to find uh, what tension equals. And so luckily, we did that in the last problem. So it's really just a matter of plugging it in this time uh, instead of solving it. So since it's the cable, we're using uh, the tension, which was 2986.55. Uh, and then the distance, again, is just how far it travels. So it always travels 23 in all these. And then uh, once again, uh, the angle theta is going to be equal to 0. And the reason that is is because uh, the, the force of this being applied upwards and it's traveling upwards. Therefore, on top of one another, uh, therefore, it's just one. So really, it's just a matter of plugging it in again. So 2986.55 and multiplying that by uh, 23, you will get 68690.65. Yeah, so 68690.65, uh, and then this is going to be joules. So W is going to be equal to 68,690.65 joules. And uh, yeah, so that's your answer to C. And let's go ahead and move on to D. Okay, so now for D, they're wanting us to find the work done by gravity. And so you should notice the main thing in these problems is all we're changing is the force, which basically chains, uh, changes what is doing the work. So... Uh, once again, work equals force times distance times the cosine of theta. And we're talking about gravity. So they want us to use the force due to gravity, which is mg. So notice this time uh, the force is mg. The last one we use tension. And in the first one, we use the net force. So that's really all that's changing. So it's going to be equal to the force, gravity, mg, times the distance times the cosine of theta. So uh, the mass is going to be 265 that's the mass of our crate times g which is 9.8 times the distance we travel 23 and then this is where uh the theta angle actually changes so notice how i said before theta is the angle between the direction of the force and the way the object travels so notice mg is pointing downwards but we know we're going upwards because of the force of tension so the forces really look like this one is up and one is down so what is the angle between these two? So the angle is going to be 180 degrees. So it's just from here to here, which is 180. And 
if that's 180, we have the cosine of 180, and you should know that that is equal to negative 1. So all it does is actually make our value negative, which means we're basically going against the direction of travel. That's what that means, essentially. So uh, plugging this in, 265 times 9.8 times 23, and don't forget the minus sign there, we get minus 59,731. So once again, we're working with joules because this is work. So uh, your answer would go ahead and be um, minus 59,731 joules. That's your answer to D. And then let's move on to the last part, which is going to be uh, E. Okay, so now we're going to do E. And E is asking us for the final speed of the load, assuming it started from rest. So what we can imagine here is it starts uh, here, and we know it's going to move 23 meters up to there. And they also tell us it starts from rest. Therefore, our initial velocity here is 0 meters per second. And we're trying to find the velocity right here. Right, the final uh, speed, which means at the end of this interval. The way we're going to do it is by using the work energy theorem, or work kinetic energy theorem, which tells us the network is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. So if we can find, or if we know the network, it'll allow us to solve for the velocity. And the way that works is uh, kinetic energy, the formula for it, is 1 half mv squared. So the change in it is this right here, 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial, sorry about that, squared. And so the way this works is to find the change in something, you take the end minus the initial. So the final minus initial, and since it's the only variable that changes in this, since the mass is constant, uh, you can just do 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. And so this right here is going to be equal to our network, which we actually solve for in, uh, I believe it was A, yeah, or sorry, B. So uh, for B, we know it's 8959.65. And another thing you should realize is that the initial velocity, they tell us is zero. And if that value is zero, this whole term is actually going to be zero. So really, one half mv final squared, which is the velocity we're trying to find, because we're finding the velocity at the end of this interval, right there, or v final, is equal to our network. So 8959.65. And then all we really have to do is just uh, manipulate this equation and solve for v final. So uh, multiplying both sides by 2 gets rid of that, and then you would divide by m. So 2 and then divide by m. To get rid of this square, you would just square root this side. So that right there just got us v final by itself. So rewriting it. 8959.65 times 2, and then you're dividing by the mass, which was 265. So let's go ahead and plug this in to actually find out what it is. 8959.65 times 2 divided by 265. And then you would second square root that answer, and you're going to get the final velocity is equal to 8.22 uh, meters per second. So you can round however you'd like, but it's about 8.22 meters per second. That's going to be the velocity uh, once it travels 23 meters. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this is going to be your answer for E, and then these are your answers for the rest of them. But yeah, so hopefully you found this useful.